So a few days ago, I was finally monetized on YouTube. And when I say finally, it only took me, drum roll, 10 months of actual focused effort. And I would barely describe that as focused. So to rewind a little bit, <clears throat> I've been posting a lot on social media over the over several years now. Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. But YouTube was probably... And TikTok. Uh, YouTube was one that I really didn't put a lot of attention and effort into it. And the reason why is the bar seemed to be set so high in order to be monetized. And I don't... I mean, obviously, anyone that's going to post on social media, if they're being truthful, their dream is, even if it's a far-fetched one, their dream is to get monetized. So, um, that was my dream, right? And uh, as a 53-year-old, or when, however old, 40, late 40s, however old I was, uh, dreaming of a great gig of being able to play and make videos about me playing, um, being a man-child, is like a dream come true, right? And uh, so, but once I realized how difficult it was to get monetized with YouTube, it kind of went on the back burner. And I was kind of kind of hoping that one of my viral fitness videos, one of my fitness videos would go viral and the the golden road would be paved for me. So, um, on my own personal, so Facebook being the, the Gen, Gen, Gen X place for, uh, the, it's the social media outlet that Gen X's feel comfortable in. Uh, you know, I had my own personal page and, you know, would post stuff on there and felt more comfortable about being in front of the camera and would post a lot of videos on my own personal page. And, you know, honestly, a lot of the stuff I do, um, it's fitness-based. And, quite frankly, uh, being middle-aged, post-middle-aged, and fit is a rarity. But it's something aspire, people aspire to, just like getting monetized on social media. And um, I was posting a lot of fitness videos, and it coincided with me uh, being asked to compete on American Ninja Warrior. You know, on top of that, I was already a bike racer. Uh, fairly good national national level masters bike racer, and uh, but the Ninja Warrior part m added to the mix just totally changed my perspective of what I don't know I wouldn't say my appeal my broader appeal is to the world um, if that sounds pretentious but it's the truth and I realized I had I had a genetic qua I had something that obviously the producers of American Ninja Warrior saw immediately and um, asked me, you know, out of a uh, um, group of 80 or 90,000 applicants, you know, right, right off the bat to compete. And, uh, I, and, and I knew being fit over 40 was a rarity, so I already had a niche carved out for me. So anyway, I started to peel back uh, posting stuff on my personal page and decided to, because I, I felt that I was upsetting people or making people that, that were my friend, they were my friends, you know, a friend on my, on my personal page on Facebook, that they, um, I was making them feel uncomfortable. And I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable and, or inadequate. So in that winter that I got picked for Ninja Warrior, the, the winter of um, January 2020, I decided to create my own separate page. It turns out it was a business page. And I called that the Wong, the Wong way. And I called, thought that was a kind of a catchy name for me and my process, frankly. And I thought it was a great, succinct uh, name for my, my brand. And uh, I felt so much better posting on that. All of this, all of this content that I had and that I felt sheepish about putting on my personal page, I was like, oh, this is great. I can just kind of cut loose and just put everything I want on the long way. And I did, and it was great. And I think it was not that year, but the following year, um, it was Father's Day, that much I remember. 
I posted a video. The uh, I made a came up with this idea literally having breakfast on my father's day about the advice I would give to a younger version of me. Younger meaning, yeah, just a younger version of me or the advice I would give to a younger dad. And that advice was learn how to, to dead hang, simply just simply hanging on, on a pull-up bar. And I made that video one take right before I got ready to do my typical Sunday bike workout when the weather's nice and it was a beautiful day that day and just immediately posted it and uh, as I started my bike workout I, in between the interval rep I got a, a friend message me he's like hey Will um, I was watching your video but the last part got cut off and I'm like whoa and that was all of like 10, 15 minutes of me posting that and some people, you know, like someone's already watching it. And uh, so I went back and watched it and sure enough, it was cut off. And so I, you know, re-edited it and reposted it. And then I realized um, that maybe the, the longer form of that video that I had created that I was going to post later um, would have appeal. And I, so I instead of um, just posting a reel, a Facebook reel of that, I posted the long form Brit video of it on my own personal page, the long way. And that went viral. Ultimately, within a few weeks, it did 1.5 million views um, for a long, actually, was it a long? No, sorry, I take it back. It wasn't a long form video. That was the whole point. I needed to get the, the message out in 60 seconds. It was, a, it was a reel, and I got it out in 60 seconds, my message and uh keep in mind it was just one take and um that went viral and more importantly as they call it in social media circles there was the conversion rate of views to followers and i went from 2500 followers mostly friends and family um to 20, ultimately 27500 followers in that few weeks um it was mind-blowing watching that counter tick uh, it was it was it was surreal watching that counter tick from 2500 25 2501 and then go ultimately to 25 27 uh 27,500 viewers uh sorry followers that was awesome that was so freaking cool um because once I realized the implication of that, that the, of that conversion rate, that that something I'd said in that video, in that 60 seconds or 59.5 seconds, resonated with someone, 27,000 people, and I suspect most of them were middle-aged people, and um, that's my target audience. I, I, I realized, like, hey, I'm not going to try to to convince an 18-year-old how to be fit, and but trying to convince a... 44 or 45 year old person what it takes to get fit and stay fit yeah i get i i am a subject matter expert and, and that subject matter expert i'll get back to it shortly and so that, it was great it that really buoyed um my hope that uh i have a message that can resonate with people it resonated with american ninja warrior producers it um which they obviously thought it would re- resonate with the broader public. And sure enough, it hit in my, my own personal space uh, on the Long Way page. And so that even, that bolstered my um, my hope. And so I just kept on posting, and the, the page just has done well, and has continued to do well. Um, my attrition rate of, of followers is very small. I'm down to like 26,900 followers, so losing 600 people not a big deal, um, but it hasn't grown much. It's growing slowly. Um, so that's it. Uh, Instagram, I've I posted probably the long, the longest of, of, of just um, of just those little reels and stuff. And and I joke, Instagram hates me for whatever reason. I get no traction. I get no additional followers. Um, it just it's the stagnant. But I like Instagram because I kind of use it as a test bed for. Um, 
ideas I had and videos I have and, and just throw it out there. And I know it's not going to do anything. But, I, you know, as, as that long wait page is blowing up, I still, again, used Instagram as a test bed because here it was these, you know, they're, all, they're owned by the same company. And it's just curious, like, how does this whole um, algorithm work and how much different are, are they between the two? So it was a nice little, like, cause and effect kind of ping pong kind of, kind of thing I could, could and it was a great test bed and I have zero success on Instagram and, and I don't mind telling people that um, and then TikTok I, I personally like TikTok I think it's great um, for on an educational basis uh, and on an entertainment based basis and um, but trying to cover these just two social media platforms and adding another one takes a lot of effort and I know on TikTok at least the time when I started posting every day was advantageous and for, for you to get attention from the algorithm probably more so than all the other ones and and I started to do that um, I did have a video score go sort of viral um, a, f- a couple of days before I left for France in October um, it was it was a Costco video of people hoarding. They're not going to say they're hoarding, but uh, being worried about the dock worker strike and rushing to, to to Costco to go buy stuff, and that boosted my followers by fifty percent in a day. <laughs> Uh, that kind of puts me now, now in a decent category of I can see I'm actually getting more followers on TikTok which speaking of which um, brings me to YouTube and this year particularly the end of 2023 I finally got a chance to sit down <clears throat> and fool around with the metrics page of on YouTube I've been posting videos occasionally not putting very much effort in quite frankly no idea what I was doing and I was basically taking ideas that I was posting on the one way page on Facebook to and Instagram and making a hybrid and doing long form videos and basically what I was doing on YouTube up until this point of the beginning of 2024 the end of 2023 was just putting stuff up that I want to see, and uh, which I liked. I think that was a great idea, and because I basically made it a channel about a, a channel for me, and it's like, what would Will Wong like to see himself? I admit I'm a unique individual, and there's probably not too many people like me, but I am a giant Venn diagram of all kinds of different interests, a lot of interests, almost too many that I figure some of these things that I'm interested in will appeal to other people. And uh, so that's what I did. I just posted videos, uh, re- reviewing power tools. I'm in a work van. Uh, speaking of work van, my Sprinter van. The thing I love about my Sprinter van is, is I, you know, I, I work out of it 99% of the time, but on occasion I'll take it to go by grace. And, um, and making this uh, a hybrid camper work van, you know, the, being able to wash my hands while I'm working is nice and hygienical and uh, healthy, but just the, the 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 whole process of me doing that appealed to me, and I love van life stuff, so I posted that stuff. Um, obviously, my workout videos, uh, cycling videos, just an amalgamation of just all kinds of stuff that's that that makes up the Venn diagram of Will Will Wong's life. But I paid no attention to how the stuff was doing uh, because, frankly, I didn't know how to read any of the metrics. And it seemed kind of daunting. And and I finally, the, over the winter, I started to kind of go back. I mean, I posted a lot of stuff, just a bunch of random things. And um, one the one metric thing I would look at is particularly on studio on the phone, on the, the, the iOS app, is the bar graph of where you are currently as far as watch hours either watch hours or views on shorts and the shorts one's funny because you know I would hover around like 126,000 views of shorts um, 
But to get monetized, you have to be 10 million. <laughs> it's like, I'm Asian and I'm decent with math and, but, uh, and, and know enough to know that 126,000 <laughs> to get to 10 million, that's not even an, a drop in the bucket. But the one above that is the watch hours. That one you can kind of wrap your head around. And about this time, actually, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I know, like, when, when it happened. YouTube had dropped the watch hour requirement. So one of the two uh, watch hour requirement from, I think it's 5,000 or 6,000 hours to four. Okay. And so just to, to rewind, in order to get monetized on, on YouTube, you need to have two requirements. One is you need a thousand followers or yeah, followers. And then two is the watch time or watches, uh, Either it views, total views, which is for the shorts, or watch hours. And so, I, I, you know, fortunately, way back when, I reached over a 1,000 followers on YouTube. I would imagine it's because of the fitness stuff and the cycling stuff. Um, that actually needs to break down. But anyway, that was slowly growing. I'd pick up, um, do the math backwards, I'd pick up about a follower a day after that point. And so I was like, okay, that, that was actually the catalyst for me to pay attention to the metrics. Because I, I was looking, it's like, hey, sweet, I made, made half the bar already, 1,000 followers. And like I said, I'd literally pick up a follower a day. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, wh- wh- what is the requ- Now, like, where am I at as far as those watch hours? And like, I was at 250 hours. Okay, and it was just hovering there, and, and it's 200, and it's the watch time, well, view count, and hours in 365 days. So the target's constantly moving, not the target's not moving, but the the basis of the what you're the, what you're targeting is moving um, in a 365 day window. So you have to constantly stay on top of it in order to kind of keep up that watch. But, and so I was hovering consistently around 225, 250 hours. Uh, in that 365 day window and uh, it's like man that's still even though it's not 10 million 4,000 compared 4,000 compared to 250 it's, it's, a, it's a lot and and uh, as I was getting more comfortable racing and um, and I was winning and more importantly so I wasn't as focused on Obviously, I was focused on winning, but I was not as, I had more time and energy because now I knew how to win and I knew how to do, uh, become a little bit more fluid in my training and preparation. So I had just a little bit more time. So I decided I'll take that little bit of time and I'll start to try to um, film more of my, what goes into me being me on the athletic side. Um, and just filming more. And that's the other thing, is just to film more. Because, again, having that extra time, taking a moment to, before I, while I do a strength training workout or calisthenics workout or bike workout, it's like, let me just set the camera up and just get a shot. And uh, I tried to do that at races. Um, it didn't work out as well this year, but it's, it's gotten better. It's, it, it was more than I'd done before. And... Uh, so, like, I realized, um, let me see what videos uh, people actually watched. And funny thing was, as I was hoping, I could focus, my main focus is to be on fitness and racing, things that I'm a subject matter expert on. But the funny thing was, it was reviews that got a lot of views. <laughs> it was reviews of, reviews of Ryobi tools, um, a, fogger, a fogger that I got during COVID, uh, got a lot of views. Um, a, ba- a nomadic sling bag, navigator bag that I totally panned in review. And I didn't mean to be mean about it, but I was just kind of perplexed at how bad the, ba- the bag was, yet it got so many good reviews. And that, to this day, uh, gets uh, still a lot of views, 135 hours of views. And that was from 2023. Um, and, and so it was just reviews of power tools and stuff like that. And it's like, this is not where I want to go, but this is part of me. Like I like gear and I like talking about gear. And so this is part of that Venn diagram. And I, I, I made that, those videos and, but that helped build those 250 hours. 
And so the, um, at the beginning of this year in 2024, I started, I, I, I kind of gave myself a, um, I kept it to myself, but I'm like, I'm going to go build my YouTube channel. I'm going to move that 250 as, cl- as close as I can to 400. So I started posting more videos. Started doing more of like just this hodgepodge of stuff. Um, adding hashtags, learning a little bit more about it. And to be honest, the stuff I was the filming the videos, I screwed that up. Um, unbeknownst to me, when I changed libraries on Final Cut, that it dropped the resolution every time I was making a video. It was in standard definition and posting it, and I had no idea because I was in a hurry to go and make videos. Because of this little bit of time I had, I was like, I only have time this to, to make videos, let alone post them and tweak them and learn the whole YouTube algorithm process. And so I found out, like, from that spring on, I was posting standard definition videos, which YouTube doesn't particularly like. They like 4K. And, I, like, I forget how I discovered it. It was just like, ah! when I found out, I'm like, oh, my God, I've been posting videos for months in the wrong format. And so now I'm slowly going back and either refilming stuff or just reprocessing them as 4K, which they should have been originally because they were filmed in 4K, and then uploading them. Uh, Live and learn. Live and learn. Double check your output uh, resolution. (laughs) And so, um, you know, this this kind of... this. Effort, extra effort I was putting in actually started to make that 250 hour tick towards the 4,000. And it was really, really cool to watch because, again, just like when I got the 27,000 plus followers on Facebook, it was just like, whoa, this is kind of cool. And that 4,000 started to really look like it was attainable. And it, it would ebb and flow, but, but consistently get about 10 hours, 10 to 15 hours a week of people watching on average two minutes of a video and if you do the math on that it's still like insanely daunting so when even when you're at like say the 2000 mark literally mid midway and you do the math in your head how many views does it take for to get another 2000 views 2000 hours and people are only watching on average two minutes of your video a, a minute 30 it's still like kind of depressing but the fact that it had been consistently going about 15 hours of people watching it every day, it started to look possible. And like I said, just not even five days ago, I got monetized. And the funny thing was, is I got down to like 3,900 and 900. And I was like, oh man, I was like, it's got to keep up, pick up momentum. It actually dropped off <laughs> as I got closer to the 4,000. I was like, wouldn't that be just a cruel, <laughs> whatever power, uh, larger being we have, just to just kind of just grind it to 3,950 and just like stop it there and just like I get canceled or something. Anyway, I eventually got, like I said, five days ago and immediately the next day, the 0.0 dollar money that I earned started to tick up and that was really cool to see and uh, so yeah so I got monetized and the there's obviously like a lot of little administrative stuff you got to do that I'm just glossed over but what was really cool literally the next day is seeing dollar amounts pop up not a lot of money and definitely not enough to go buy gelato. Well, it's a dump, definitely buy gelato in two days. But uh, the whole idea is that is I hope to I hope is going to uh, grow exponentially. Who knows? But that said, it's it's possible to do. Um, and just to throw this out, I just like a lot of things I do, I do a lot of research, but I don't do so much that to get bad news in order the the bad and to find bad news that will dissuade me in this case it was finding out a how many youtube users there are in the world which i kind of knew just given how popular it is and how many people there are 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 on the planet which is eight billion um how many active youtube accounts there are which means how many people post videos and still like consistently post and of that subset how many are actually monetized so 
Here's, here are the numbers. Two and a half bil- billion people are YouTube, have YouTube accounts. Okay, two and a half bil- billion people on earth. Of that two and a half, two and a half billion, as of 2024, um, actually as of 2022, I couldn't find one uh, for 2024, but at the time of 2022, it was 38 million um, active accounts. So these are people actually like, go, so let's just throw it, make it conservatively 38 million, but I think it's actually 50 million now of people of making videos. So of the 50 million who actually make videos, who are actually creating content, only 2 million as of 2024 are uh, monetized. So you go from 2.5 billion to only 2 million monetized accounts. I'm glad I didn't see that <laughs> because it would have, it, that's, it's sobering. Um, but now I, now I know that number, it kind of gives me a pat on the back. I give myself a pat on the back. It's like, you made it. You made it into this very, very small group of people. And I, uh, so, and, and I intend to kind of keep this going because this is just, this is the best outlet. This is the outlet I really wanted. Like Instagram seems to be geared towards a group, um, a demographic, a group that really I have no appeal for. My stupid human tricks are great, but I'm not, don't want to do stuff that I'm going to get to push the limit to get hurt in order to get clicks. I want to do things on an educational level and try to teach people and show people ways of doing things in order to improve themselves. So thanks for watching. Man, that was a long video. Uh, like and subscribe um, if you like this content. And um, I'll share more as I go along this journey because it's incredibly cool and it is rewarding I have to say because it's validation um, that I'm on the right path and I want to help people thanks for watching